Hello, happy Saturday. I today am planning on filming a knit with me or knit and chat as I make a little tiny, tiny Christmas jumper. Um, you know, a little Christmas sweater ornament and chat about um, what knitting has given me or what I'm grateful for um, after picking up knitting and doing it for about a year, half, a year and a half. So let's get into it. All right, hello. Uh, before we start off with the topic of the day and the project of the day, I wanna show, this is my newest finish object. It is the Mauricia Cardigan by Vert and Rose um, or Alexandria, Alexandra, Skol I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce her last name, um, but Vert and Rose is her Instagram. Very lovely, this is a great pattern. I knit it with um, two strands of Yarnalia Baby Alpaca. It's just a lace weight alpaca. Um, and one strand of cum fiber spates cumulus in the color fig. Um, and the color of the yarn alien or alpaca yarn is rose gold. So very happy with it. I love the little buttons I chose to put on, they're flowers. Um, the drape is wonderful. It's nice and cozy. So yeah, very excited. I had to modify, I didn't really modify. I just, my gauge was slightly off. So normally I would have knit a size medium or small and I just went down to the extra small and still ended up with a fair amount of ease once it blocked out since it is you know very drapey alpaca um, and all that but I think it looks really nice you know from over here it looks like a fully cabled cardigan uh, but when you get close I really like that um, the faux cable details looks like little starbursts or something so very happy with it and I'm excited to wear it for the winter season so I'm planning today to try a bit of a new format for me. I have a knitting project that I just cast on. So this is going to be like a little sweater ornament. Um, I'm using the pattern Tiny Gilded Christmas Jumper. I think it has ornament in the name as well. Let me double check. Um, yes, the Tiny Gilded Christmas Jumper Knitting Pattern by um, Fable Knitwear. It is a free pattern that she just released. So. Um, well, the focus is not on a like a tutorial of this, you know, if I say anything, I'm not giving any information away that is not freely available and I will have it linked down below if you would like to knit one with me. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, today I want to discuss the um, kind of the gratitudes I have for knitting as it gets closer to the end of the year, I always and one of those like sappy people who likes to reflect on really what I'm grateful for. Um, you know, Thanksgiving in the United States is next week, so I will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, but even if I, let me grab a stitch stop or a stitch marker. Even if I didn't celebrate Thanksgiving, I think just the end of the year and reflecting on the past year is a great time to think about what you really appreciate. And so I've been thinking a lot about. Um, you know, how grateful I am that I picked up knitting a year and a half ago and all the different elements of knitting that just make me very grateful to be part of this craft. So thought that I would kind of discuss those today, share what I am grateful for, and I hope to hear what you are grateful for. And I will try really hard to keep my knitting in the frame the whole time, but it's kind of a lot to balance knitting talking and making sense and caring about videography. So we're trying, um, but I will also insert some clips of it while I'm knitting it and all of that as well. So, okay, anyways, let's get into it. First of all, uh, the first thing I kind of want to talk about as a category of what knitting has given me or enabled for me is community. Um, I, a little background on me, I'm a quite introverted person. I also, I'm not from a big family. I personally, I'm technically have a half brother, but he's like 16 years older than me. So for all intents and purposes, I grew up as an only child. Um, my parents got divorced. So I, <laughs> I'm very used to being the only kid around or like just interfacing with one other person. Um, and so, you know, I've just never 
had a big community. I also, in high school, my extracurricular was always a job. And not that I had to work during high school, um, just that I always kind of wanted to have my own money or have my own freedom. And honestly, looking back, I think it was kind of a defense mechanism for me to, I couldn't understand why I didn't wanna be a part of the extracurriculars that a lot of my friends were or like why my social circle was a lot smaller. So I would use like, oh, well, I have work, I'm working instead of doing all that as kind of a defense mechanism. But I also have always liked working. Um, so that's all to say that I've never really been a community member in a sense that I think a lot of people have, whether they're, you know, a member of their soccer team or, um, you know, have a really big family they're a part of. I just never really had that or like not had a big social group either, like outside of that. And um, I really appreciate that through knitting, which is something that, you know, I can very comfortably engage in because I definitely am quite an introverted person and don't crave a large circle social circle. But through knitting, I have been able to interact with a lot of amazing people and really feel like I'm part of a community. Um, some examples of this that just like fill up my heart are last weekend or maybe two weeks, two weekends ago now, but a weekend pretty recently, I went to um, a trunk show, which if you're not familiar, um, yarn dyers will bring or just smaller yarn sellers will bring some of their a large collection of their stock to a local yarn store and you get to go there and the dyer is there or the the business owner is there as well as the owners of the yarn store and employees from the yarn store and there's just a lot of yarn available to look at and you get to talk to people and they're wonderful and so last weekend i went to uh, the Salty Blonde, she's one of my favorite dyers. Um, I've knit a few things with her. She's a local to me dyer in Colorado. So she had a um, a trunk show at Lula Fay Fibers, which is another local to me yarn store. And so I went and I've talked to Salty Blonde a few times through DMs about sample knitting or we were both going to the same concert. Um, and she recognized me, like just, she like I walked up to her and she asked if I was Sarah and she knew who I was and that just made me so happy and was talking to me about the fact that I had brought up sample knitting for her and that she would love to have me do that um and was like if I don't see your application when I put out a sample call like I will I'll go bug you I'll dm you and it just like made me so happy that <laughs> this person that I'd never met her in person and you know, I have great friends, we have close bond, but I typically don't have like acquaintances or like close-ish friends. Um, and it just like made me really happy that she knew me and wanted to talk to me or I love, like I almost always go to Lula Fay a few weeks after I finish something to kind of show it off or like get, get their help choosing colors for a project. And um, it's just so nice to like, <laughs> Be able to talk about something I care about with other people who also care about it and like then get to show off something later or just be remembered like I think for me the thing was like being recognized um just I don't know it made me really happy or here on YouTube like I recognize a lot of the people that comment consistently um or sometimes people will like post a little video of me on their Instagram stories they'll post you know I'm watching Sarah's handmakes today while I'm making pancakes or something like that and it just makes me so happy to like be interacted with and recognize a lot of people and like kind of I'm still quite small on YouTube of course um and even smaller on Instagram but growing some semblance of an audience and a community just like makes me really happy to <laughs> be recognized and be remembered and be thought about um outside of like my small group of people. Um, that's very sappy, I think, but <laughs> it's also very true that I'm just like very grateful that I am part of something. Um, and yeah, that fills me with a lot of a lot of joy. Um, I need to pause to read the next part of my pattern <laughs> and then we will continue on. I'm so sorry, I told you this might be an interesting format for me. Um, 
Eight stitches evenly, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is one thing that I am very grateful for um, as far as the community aspect. I think another thing that I'm very grateful for with the knitting is I feel like a much more balanced person after knitting for the past year and a half. Um, when I started knitting, I had just graduated. I have my, um, I have a master's in international development and I had just graduated with that degree in June, 2022. And then I started um, knitting in July, 2022. And so granted a lot of the changes that I've seen in myself could also just be due to the fact that I am now like a, I don't wanna say full adult, I'm obvious. I was obviously like an adult before and like I don't wanna say people who are in school are not <laughs> adults, but like I was on my own for the first time, like not in school and that in itself makes you grow a lot. But I also think that um, taking up knitting was really great for me to just make me a more balanced person. Um, the way I've seen this play out for myself is that in the past, I've already kind of mentioned, I've, I always worked in high school. Like I always did high school and then worked at Target or like worked, I used to serve frozen yogurt, like whatever I could to just um, be busy and like have a job on top of school. Like I really liked that. Um, and the same is true for college. I worked i i've been working full time um in my current position since like 2020 um and i graduated in 2022 so i worked full time and did college for two years um and before that i was working as well so like three years of my college was working it just was like was i doing it full time or part time um so i've just, I don't know, I've just always like worked a lot and um, always, I guess, relied on being busy to feel complete. And like I used to, and obviously the pandemic changed this a lot too, but I used to just not, um, I wouldn't feel good about myself if I didn't do something in a day. Um, whether that was like, like if I had a sick day, I felt like I had to leave the house and go do something. Even if it was just like go to Target just because like so much of who I was and like my own self image was tied to my productivity and like my interactions with others. Um, whether that's like at work and like having that kind of doing something and people are perceiving me doing it or um, yeah, I don't know. I just needed to feel like I was being productive in a more traditional sense of the word productivity. And um, when I graduated, I like did not know what to do with myself. I was kind of entering a bit of a crisis um, when it comes to like who my own self perception, because you know, for years I had been an A student working very hard at school, working full time or working in some regard and, you know, doing other stuff on the side. I also, I should say, I graduated a little, not early. I got my master's and my bachelor's. Um, at the same time, I did kind of a concurrent enrollment and normally the program I was in would be a five year project program, but I did it in four. Um, and so, you know, I just filled my time with a lot of like reading and doing school and just, just being busy. I don't know. I relied heavily on the fact that I was busy and I didn't have to feel things as much as other people. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but like, yeah, I think a lot of people have struggled with this and I think I've seen a lot of people talk about it coming out of the pandemic as far as for so long, our lives were so defined by our jobs and what we did pro productively and what we did for others that 
um, you know, I didn't have a great self-identity and I didn't have like a lot outside of knitting uh, or outside of work and school. Um, that was who I was. And I, I, I made this in 2020, like I crafted then, but I think the not in the way that knitting I knit. Um, and so, you know, once I started knitting, it really gave me like something else to care about. Um, that wasn't hanging out with friends or being quote unquote productive. Like I love the fact that knitting has given me a lot of balance in how I want to spend my time. Like I still am enjoy being a productive person. I still, you know, work full time and enjoy that. I don't think I'd ever want to quit and like work. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't really want to stay at home. Um, cause I do, I'm like a little bit of a busy body. Um, so I, I do enjoy having things going on, but I think that like knitting has really given me some more balance in what those things going on can be. Um, because I'm, don't want to hang out with people all the time, don't want to go out all the time. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm either working or I'm sitting. Um, but knitting has really given me something else. And so I'm really appreciative of that when it comes to knitting. And then, yeah, it's made me more balanced. I think also just because of the people that I've seen and, you know, I follow a lot of people who are a few years older than me, um, who knit. Um, Laura Penrose, for instance, is coming to mind. I love her YouTube and I'm subscribed to her Patreon too. I think I've mentioned her before in some of my videos and I just, I really love her. Um, I, I'm really grateful for what she has given me as far as like the influence that she has. Um, I don't know if I want to say over me, but like, I think that some of the things she talks about in her videos when it comes to her autism diagnosis or, you know, dealing with being really busy or like dealing with, um, hard emotions and having family. And I don't know, a lot of things about Laura Penrose just like really resonate with me and have helped me to kind of like the way she's talked about her therapy journey or the way she's talked about being overstimulated and things like that have really resonated with me and helped me to kind of consider in myself like how I can improve being overstimulated or being anxious. Um, so I'm very appreciative of that level of balance too of like being able to kind of listen to other people who also are doing a hobby I love. Um, but also like bring this kind of openness and the fact that I guess this is getting back to the community point, but like a lot of the community we have established um, in on the online kind of knitting space is so open and supportive and respectful and just like has helped me grow a lot and become more balanced by seeing how other people are living and how I, want to be. So I don't know. It sounds weird, but yeah, very grateful for that. And let's see. Yeah, I messed up. This is not the knitting with this is not going well. I think that I might just have to knit the sweater, the little ornament off screen and then show it when it's done because <laughs> I am struggling to do both at the same time. But yeah, hopefully you're seeing some nice footage of me knitting it and not just me tinking it, which is currently what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, the balance that knitting has brought into my life um, and less focus on just outright productivity um, has meant a lot to me and really helped me grow after years and years of being so extra, ex I'd say extrinsically, extrinsically driven by feeling productive or, you know, per being perceived as productive or just not knowing what to do when I wasn't working. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that. 
I'd also say that I am very grateful for the pride in myself that knitting has given me. Um, I think that this comes from a lot of different sources when it comes to my knitting. Um, first of all, you know, it's it's hard. It's something that I do with my hands and like a lot of people in our modern culture can't really say like, oh, I made this or oh, I did this or like have that kind of level of connection. And so I love the pride I get from being able to say like, yes, I made this or, um, you know, show something off that I have created myself. That's, that's incredible. Um, and the fact that I like have gained a lot of trust in myself and a lot of just like, yeah, confidence and self-assurance from knowing like trying new things in knitting has kind of allowed me to try new things in other aspects of my life. You know, as far as like, I learned how to cable or I learned how to read a chart and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would. So like, why don't I also go try to do something hard in my normal life? Like, um, I don't know, I've always had a lot of driving anxiety, for instance, and there's specific roads that like just stress me out, even though I don't drive them that often. Like I, there's no reason for me to be as anxious as I am about <laughs> a lot of roads, but I went on a trip a couple weeks ago where I had to drive one of the roads that really stresses me out and I was fine and I feel like part of it like I was just telling myself and I don't, it's not like well I know how to cable so therefore I can drive like it's not that one-to-one -one correlation but I think it was more of just this like I have this I've gained a lot of innate trust in myself and innate like confidence from trying new things in knitting in a place that has like very low, very low risks involved with doing something wrong or, you know, not knowing how to do something and, you know, proving myself over and over like, okay, yeah, it might be scary at first or it might be confusing at first, but I'm competent. Like I, you know, as long as I find good instructions and there's some things that maybe won't work with my brain, but generally like, you know, if I find good instructions and I care about it, I have a base skill level and I can learn that. Like I can do that. And having that confidence in myself, um, which seems so simple, has really just leaked into other areas of my life and made me more confident at work as far as like, oh, I have to do something new at work. Like, okay, that's fine. I can totally do that because I can do these other things like it's not as scary to go into something new um because i'm kind of micro exposing myself to that constantly with the patterns i choose to knit and like i definitely am a knitter that really loves to try new things and as i've said i've only been knitting for um a year and a half so there's still so many new things to try for me um and that just fills me with a lot of confidence um another way that knitting makes me more confident or have more pride in myself is just um I sometimes I don't know if other people experience this but sometimes I feel like when I'm knitting or when I finish a garment I can see the generations of knitters that came before me um when it comes to like you know early times knitting I think was invented a long time ago and so there's been years and years of knitters or I follow Retro Claude on YouTube as well and she posts a lot about a, about a lot of vintage knitting patterns from like the 1940s or earlier and there is such a history in knitting and I think the fact that it is so female-led or I should say women-led um just like sometimes when I'm knitting I feel like I can feel all of those generations of knitters before me like proud of me um or encouraging me i don't know if that makes sense i think you know my grandma also knits and the fact that i have this kind of lineage and she said before like i'm so glad we're you know there's still a knitter in our family like having someone that can make the stockings and like you know having the person in your family that is like the maker um and like I have a handmade stocking from my great grandma that she knit and like looking at that and being like I could do that in the future like for my future grandkids I can do that and like 
I don't know, I can just see the time history of it. And it's, it's very empowering to like feel like I am part of this long history of women and the fact that like there's been so much craftivism through the ages as far as like knitting for certain causes or like participating in now you can participate in like hat drives where you're knitting hats for people um in need and things like that like the fact that there is just this history and it's been so culturally important especially for women and now that it's less so like there are less of us to kind of hold on to that tradition which just like makes me feel very empowered i also think sometimes i can see forward like i've already mentioned you know i can make this for my future grandkids just like my great grandma made for my mom and then me like i with this sweater for instance i finished it and i was watching stranger things and uh, one of the characters was wearing, Robin was wearing a sweater that kind of looked like this as far as like had some cabling, some pretty thin cabling, and it was like a straight neck. Um, and I, you know, that show's based in the 80s and it just made me be like, oh my God, like that style, I guess, has come back or at least in the knitting community has come back. And like, oh, I wonder if in 40 years, you know, if I have a daughter, she'll want to wear this. Like, you know, I'm making things that can last 40 plus years and that I'm going to take care of because... I put a lot of love and effort into them. Whereas like a lot of the clothing that I just buy, I'm, I know I'm not gonna have in 40 years. I'm not going to have something to give my kids from like when I was this age, um, when it comes to like the leggings I wear, or the commercially bought clothes I wear, but I know that like I will be keeping a lot, of, at least the majority of the garments I've made and that in the future, you know, if I have kids, they'll be able to look at them. Like if they want, they can wear them. And like the fact that I have kind of, am creating this legacy in the things that I make is just amazing to me. Um, and it makes me so happy. Like in my family, um, my mom has a quilt that her grandmother, I think it's her grandmother made um, in a knitting circle in England before she moved to the United States. and the history behind that is so cool and the fact that my mom still has that and like may not remember her grandma that much or it might even be her great grandmother but may not remember you know the woman that made it that much but like the fact that she has this tangible thing that my great great grandma made and the story behind it lives on through it is just so amazing to me and makes me feel very much a part of something um and very empowered in what I am doing. So yeah, I don't know, kind of a weird, <laughs> I don't know, it, tell me if you relate to that because sometimes I feel like it's weird, but I think that, you know, sometimes I can just feel the generations before me and the generations to come through what I'm making, especially if I'm making a pattern that's kind of similar to something I've seen my grandma make in the past or things like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know, kind of interesting source of gratitude and pride. And yeah, I've gotten barely any knitting done, but I will be inserting clips instead because this is really hard. Um, so I appreciate you bearing with me. Another thing that knitting has definitely given me is a lot of stress release. I definitely am an anxious person. I, I just, I have anxiety that's you know, something that I have to kind of accommodate for and I know about myself. Um, and I tend to overthink a lot, um, but the nice thing is that knitting really helps me shut down those parts of my brain. Um, if I just, you know, I'm feeling really anxious or on the verge of a panic attack and I sit down and I knit for a few minutes, I can feel myself calm down. Like I can feel my internal processing working better. Like it kind of almost feels like it, takes up the attention of those parts of my brain that would be overthinking or would be stressing about something and just makes it so I can't and then the rest of my brain will like relax <laughs> um and then you know I'm able to really feel a lot better going forward um and so I'm really grateful for that you know another part of that that I think is on the same vein is that my screen time since I've started knitting has gone down so much. Um, I used to just 
watch TV, so I have the big screen going with a TV show and then be looking at Instagram on my phone. And I, that's, I don't think I absorbed anything that I was watching on the TV. And I think that I was spending like 10 hours a day on my phone. And granted, I still like spend time on my phone, um, still could use my phone less, but I think that it's definitely better than it was in the past. Um, and I'm really grateful that knitting has given that to me. Um, and you know, just kind of given me something to do with my hands um, and like use up some of my brain space so I don't do that mindless scrolling uh, because it's definitely not good for you in the long term. And I'm just, I'm just grateful that, you know, I do something else. You know, I see a lot of, a lot of my friends, I'll hang out with them and, you know, I feel like I can't have a conversation with them for too long without them needing to check their phone or do something like just use their device which I get I'm not bashing anyone but I also don't really have that urge like I will get the urge to be like I want to knit if my knitting project is close and I'm having a conversation with someone I so desperately want to pull it out but um I don't really feel it for my phone and I'm really grateful that I at least have that level of my attention span and I think that really has helped my anxiety and overthinking as well to just spend less time online because a lot of a lot of our social medias are designed to keep us engaged on them and the best way to foster engagement is big emotions uh, including you know anger anxiety sadness so you know I don't think the knitting world is like that and I actually have made a separate knitting Instagram that helps a lot because it's just knitting content um, so there's a lot less to get upset or feel anxious about, but you know, still, um, still I can find anything to be anxious about if I try hard enough. Um, so I'm just grateful that I spend less time on my phone. Um, and hopefully I'm like, you know, helping my brain in the long run with the fact that I'm a little bit less social media addicted than I otherwise would be. Um, and a little less stressed about the world because I am paying attention less, well, not paying attention less, but I just am consuming less content. Um, so, you know, can't absorb as much. So very grateful for, you know, a lot of different elements of knitting. I think that it really has given me so much in my daily life. I think that I'm a much more balanced and a happier person compared to now than when I first started knitting and I just I love the fact that I feel like a member of a community I love the pride that knitting has given me in what I'm able to create and how that is transferred to the rest of my life and I love that I am less stressed and spend less time on my phone so thank you for following along or listening along today I definitely look forward to connecting in the future. Please drop some information below about how you feel um, about this topic. If you can relate to, you know, having some, some gratitude for knitting, if it's helped you develop a community or especially tell me, do you feel that sense of empowerment or like the generations before and after when you're knitting sometimes? Um, I don't know if that's weird, but yeah, I would love to just hear it all and I look forward to connecting below and I am definitely going to finish this little sweater which real time in the video this is what I have um I definitely will be posting or putting in some clips of me knitting it so it's not just you looking at me talking and fiddling with my hands um so hopefully I can you know hold it up when it's done um but yeah thank you so much for watching today and please I think this video especially, I would love to start a discussion about, um, you know, put something down below. If you want to like post something on Instagram, you could tag me and say, here's what I, I'm really grateful for in knitting. Um, I don't know, you don't have to, but uh, it would be great to see those and be able to share with other people. Cause I think one of the downsides about comments is they're not always on YouTube, they're not always great to foster, like a longer term interaction. The notifications are kind of weird about going back and forth and there's no photos. So feel free to put something on Instagram. If I see anything tagged, I'll definitely repost or put it on my story. Um, Cause yeah, I just think 
so that others can see, not just as a promo, but you know, so others can be involved. Um, but yeah, I just think that I am so grateful for what knitting has given me. Um, so happy that I feel like a more confident and a calmer person than I was before. And I owe a lot of that to knitting. And so wanted to show some gratitude today and I hope to hear your gratitude as well. And I will connect with you again soon. Bye.